When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131. Hey everybody, Jerry Williams, aka Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. Today we look at number 187 and 188 of Eric Dubé's 200 Proofs, The Earth Is Not a Spinning Ball. 187. The second law of thermodynamics, otherwise known as the law of entropy, along with the fundamental principles of friction and resistance, determine the impossibility of Earth being a uniformly spinning ball. Over time, the spinning ball Earth would experience measurable amounts of drag constantly slowing the spin and lengthening the amount of hours per day. As not the slightest such change has ever been observed in all of recorded history, it is absurd to assume the Earth has ever moved an inch. You said the fundamental principles of friction, resistance, and drag, right? Yeah, that's what you said. So, when the Earth is traveling through the vacuum of space, what friction, resistance, or drag would it be experiencing from that? Is there going to be drag from the air in space? No, there's no air in space. Is there going to be friction from the surface it's, it's rolling on? No, that sounded stupid just saying the words. But... I'm not going to dismiss what Dubé has said here as stupid, because the foundation of his statement is correct. Oh. Shit. Blew a fuse. Hold on. It's uh, been a while since the system has encountered fundamentally sound claims. It wasn't ready. There we go. Coming back up. Give it a second. Ah, there we go. As I was saying, if the Earth were to encounter any friction or drag, then its motion would slow. If the drag was encountered in its orbital path, the length of the year would change, and if the friction affected its spin, that would slow, and the length of the day would change. And guess what? Earth's rotation does encounter friction due to the tides. This does cause the slowing of the Earth's rotation, not by much, the Earth has a lot of angular momentum and an increase in the length of the day, though not at any rate a person would notice in their lifetime. There is, however, a direct consequence of the minor slowing of the Earth's rotation. Due to the law of conservation of momentum, the angular momentum that is lost by the Earth with its slowing rotation is then gained by the Moon causing it to move away from the Earth at a measurable rate. 188. Over the years, NASA has twice changed their story regarding the shape of the Earth. At first, they maintained Earth was a perfect sphere, which later changed to an oblate spheroid, flattened at the poles, and then changed again to being pear-shaped, as the southern hemisphere allegedly bulges out as well. Unfortunately for NASA, however, none of their official pictures show an oblate spheroid or a pear-shaped Earth. All their pictures, contrary to their words, show a spherical and clearly CGI fake Earth. NASA, NASA, NASA. It's always about NASA. Well, here's the thing. NASA never said it was a perfect sphere. Oh, I'm sure when you peaked in the seventh grade, they were teaching you perfect sphere, but that wasn't NASA, and that's not the scientific standard. You see, the Earth being an oblate spheroid was known long before the existence of NASA, 
like a couple hundred years before NASA. You know what else happened in 1958? Vanguard 1 was launched into orbit, the data from which told us the pear-shapedness of the Earth. So, before NASA was telling anybody anything, the scientific community had learned about the pear-shapedness of the Earth. Now, the Earth's oblateness isn't very much, but it is noticeable in the high-resolution images of the Earth. You just have to have enough pixels to tell. The pear-shapedness is barely there at all, and it wouldn't be noticeable on a photo, because when you're looking at that photo, you're looking at the atmosphere. But not only is this claim ignorant of scientific history, it is an example of why I say you globe deniers are anti-science. Because what you're saying here is this, the fact that the scientific community updates its model of the Earth and the universe as it gains more information is a bad thing. All the denial of the scientific observations put aside. This here is the greatest example of anti-science thinking. Globe deniers like to claim, we're not anti-science, we're just anti-bad science. Well, this is bad science. That ideas should not change based on new data is anti-science. Pure and simple. Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory. 